Okay, the last thing we did with our crow box was install the coin magazine and test the uh, the action of the door and the coin feed. And now that we're through all that, we need to take some parts off. So we're going to remove the lid of the machine, set that aside. We're not going to need it. And also we're going to remove the sliding uh, basket lid, which we're also not going to need. <clears throat> so in this step, um, we're going to be turning the crow box a lot. Uh, also, if you still have any masking tape on, get rid of that now because everything's been... Uh, cemented together so we're done with our temporary holding so we'll just get this tape off so that's not in our way so what we're going to be doing in this step is we're going to be taking some thin uh, styrene panels which have been laser cut and we're going to install those on the outside of the basket to make the ramp uh, the ramps, I should say, that the coins use to get into the machine. So um, I'm going to need to collect a couple parts. This is um, a styrene, uh, we call this a ramp lower. It's one of the lower halves um, of the coin ramp. Uh, this one's already been peeled, and this one uh, was laser cut, but still has the protective paper on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and peel that too. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now we have two matched uh, lower ramp panels. Um, we'll need a, a few uh, clothespins, just household clothespins for this step. Um, if you have uh, some kind of specialty clamp, you can use those, of course. I find that uh, household clothespins are actually the best tool uh, I have, at least, for um, holding things together on this step. We're going to be using some cement, but not until a little bit later, but I'll have that nearby. Leave the cap on. So let's uh, talk a little bit about how these go in. So um, in the crow box, one panel will go here to make part of the ramp, and the panels, the lower panels that we're using right now will make the uh, lower part of the ramp. And this gap here will remain. This is where rainwater uh, falls out of the machine um, instead of going on down the coin ramp and into the machine like a coin would. Um, so this is part of how we uh, make sure that we shed rainwater. So as I, as I promised, we're going to be turning things a lot in this step. Um, and I actually have a piece of wood here that I'm going to use just to kind of elevate things for the purpose of the video. So we'll talk about how to thread in um, one of the ramp lowers and then how we get these secured. <clears throat> so as you can see, these are basically square panels with a, with a, a pointed notch at one side. So the way that these get installed is that the long side here goes towards the crow box like this and the point should be up and uh, these uh, panels actually go right in between the gaps in the uh, what we call the uh, coin intake ramp um, which we may have also called the tongue before and you can see that it slides behind these two pieces here so um, there are built-in slots in that coin, admin, uh, coin intake ramp and we just uh, put our uh, ramp lower right into those slots. So the next step We're going to sort of thread this through here. So you just want to kind of keep your thumb where mine is right here where the uh, uh, Where the uh, ramp panel goes through the uh, intake ramp and use your other hand to just sort of follow Follow the uh, curve of this rib as you gently push um, as you gently push from this end, you push the uh, the panel in, and you kind of want to just sort of follow the ramp or the rib shape. Now, when we get to this stringer here, this is the important part. We need to tuck uh, our ramp panel under that stringer. So what we do here is uh, I like to keep a hand inside the basket here and just push this panel and kind of help the. Uh, the panel find its way up and over that uh, stringer. And you'll know it's in place when uh, the ramp panel completely covers the stringer, and in this case it has. You can't see any of the acrylic plastic of this stringer, but if I slide this panel back a little bit, you can see that it's there. But you want to make sure that you tuck it under these tabs here and get it flush with the, um, with the stringer on that side. <clears throat> and the reason that I feel that clothespins make the best clamp here 
is because the little cutout part of the clothespin actually goes over this first ramp stringer so that we can clamp down on this second one. So I like to use three of these, one in the middle and then one on either side of that one. And the idea here is <clears throat> after we get the other ramp panel in, the other lower panel that we're going to work on, we're going to apply some cement right here where the ramp panel meets the stringer and that'll hold it in place um, and uh, we will have some more uh, installation to do on these lower panels um, but it's best to do them after this has been cemented and that cement has had a chance to dry so um, I'm going to proceed with the second panel here and again you keep the pointy side at the bottom of the crow box and the long edge of this here against the crow box face and just thread that into the uh, coin intake ramp just like the other and then just kinda help it along and push from this end and keep your thumb right around here bend with your fingertips and just help that ramp panel follow the uh, contour of the rib until it gets under the stringer that it belongs on there and again you can check from the top and make sure that your panel is completely flush with the stringer here. Can't see any of the acrylic. And then uh, <clears throat> I'll add my clothespins. I'll put one in the center. And again, it goes over the first stringer, over this first stringer, and clamps the ramp to that second stringer. I'll use one at either end and one in the middle. Alright, now we're ready to do some cementing, so I'll get this flipped over. So, as discussed, we're going to put a bead of cement along here and along here so that we can cement that um, stringer, uh, sorry, we can cement the uh, ramp panel in place to the stringer. With the cement in place on both sides, I like to just give the clamps a little release and then put the pressure back on. And uh, I call them clamps, we're talking about clothespins here. But this lets a little bit of the cement get under the panel and in contact with the stringer so that we get a really good bond. Um, now, um, <clears throat> we're going to wait for the cement to dry for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, all of these clothespins are blocking what we need to do next. And also, we need a good uh, bond here between the ramp panel and the uh, stringers so that we can we'll be able to tug and push on these loose ends of the uh, ramp panels to get them into place without having to worry about pulling them out of the stringers uh, each time so this needs a good amount of time to dry now, you know sometimes we've moved on after about 15 minutes or so just to let the cement get a little bit um, more solid less of a gel so that we know it's not going to run or move on us in this case I suggest we leave this for over an hour because we actually want to get a good bond here um, because um, if we pulled out one of these uh, half cemented ramp panels we would just need to redo the whole thing so uh, be patient here and let this get actually dry so give it about an hour um, more if you have it that's fine and then uh, come back we'll move on okay so I've had these sitting now for or this assembly's been sitting for on my end two hours so the bond is pretty good I'm going to go ahead and take off my clothes pins here take a look at where we are. So now uh, looks like yeah so later on what we're going to need to do is press this part into the shape of the ribs just like we see here and get it glued down <clears throat> but for right now I'd like to move on and do part of the um, do the uh, upper ramp panels. <clears throat> These are a little different because they kind of tension themselves and again um, the uh, upper ramp panels have this uh, this um, kind of notched edge and that's where uh, this is part of our weatherproofing strategy as well where if you can imagine this is part of the ramp curved like this if rain were to fall into the machine and down this ramp these little um, 
wavy lines here. They help break up the uh, water into drops and, and let it drip right out of the machine instead of running on down the ramps. Uh, I have another um, upper ramp panel here which is still in its protective paper, so we'll get that peeled. these get installed. So the way the upper ramp panels work, um, it's pretty simple really. These actually tension themselves. So they're easier to cement into place. But all you need to do, and if you look at your front ribs here, you can see that the rib has a curve that comes along and then a straight line here, straight line segment, which goes up uh, under the um, this stringer. And that's exactly what we want to do. We just want to take our ramp panels and insert them along that straight part until they go, um, they get tucked under the stringer. When you have these in place, you'll see that these uh, little notches here will stick down past, they'll, they'll extend beyond the stringer, which is exactly what you want because we want water to, um, to form into drops there and, and fall out of the machine. So the nice thing about the upper panels is, once you get one in place like that, <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is we're going to bend this panel and just tuck that end right up between the rib and the uh, perch here. And uh, it doesn't need to perfectly follow the shape of the rib yet. We can deal with that a little bit later. But that will provide more than enough tension for us to do our cementing um, and uh, without having to use clamps on this particular one. So I'm going to put both of these in so the other one goes in the same way. And then I'll just tuck this right up under the perch and above the rib, so between the perch and the rib, just like that. And then I'll keep good tension on. So now if we look at this from the top, you can see that we've got our little weather ridges. They stick. They extend past the um, past the uh, stringer. So once we're satisfied that those are in a good position. This will be the same as before, same as we did with the um, lower ramp panels. We're just going to do a bead of cement right along that joint there. So I've got my cement ready here. I'm just going to put a bead in there. Just like that. And then, as with most of the things, I like to give it a little push like this and then let it fall back into place. And that lets a little bit of cement creep under the uh, styrene sheet and uh, really get us a good bond to that um, that uh, stringer. And then we'll do the same on the other side of the crow box here. Lay a bead of cement down. Fix a couple air bubbles there. And give it a little press, let that cement get under. We'll flip it back up like this and make sure everything's seated correctly. And again, we're waiting on drying. Um, and we need to wait a good long time again because um, on the next step we're going to be tugging on these little loose ends of styrene here and that's how we're going to pull the shape of that ramp together uh, to make the final shape. And in order to be able to do that correctly, we need to make sure that, that um, those panels are bonded to their, to their stringers. So this is another one or two hour wait, so we're just going to let this sit, come back to it. Okay, so I've let this sit now, dry for a good bit, a little over an hour. Um, so now we're going to finish out these uh, upper ramps. Um, to do that, we're going to need a couple strips of our traction tape. Uh, this is one inch wide, um, which is ideal, I think, for this project. Um, if your tape is larger, you may need to cut it down to one inch wide strips. These are three and three eighths inch long, or just short of three and a half and you'll know you have the right length when your uh, tape fits comfortably in between the front basket window here and the uh, front panel of the machine on this perch so the one that I just used I think was a little bit big this one I think is a better fit because we got just a little bit of wiggle room there so I'm just gonna take an old pair of shop scissors that I don't use for rough jobs and snip a little bit more of this tape off 
Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> okay. And uh, we'll also need a hobby knife for this step. And just my little safety tip here, I keep these impaled on pieces of cardboard like that uh, when I'm not using them just so they're safe when they're lying around the shop. So the idea here is we're going to want to pull these uh, ramps, these ramp uppers into position. And if you're lucky, I got lucky here, you can see that it's already pulled really nicely to the shape of that uh, rib. So now all I need to do is shave this excess off here. So this part that I've actually been using to pull it along um, is waste material. So I'm going to keep my left thumb here so that the, uh, that the uh, panel does not retract. And then I'm just going to carefully with the blade on the other side shave this away. Actually, Just take my knife and get it down into there. And then follow the uh, shape of the uh, perch itself just like that. I'm going to have to cut this seam down. It seems that my hobby knife is not sharp enough for what I'm doing. So I'm going to go back to the scoring method. The old score and snap. There we go. And again here. part of the panel to snap off clean. Now that's really misbehaving. So now I can at least just trim these parts down, flush. There. And then here, just carefully using hand muscles only so that I don't uh, end up with a knife running away toward my body with too much force. So let's see where I am here. Um, looks like this panel slipped down a little bit. So I've got a little more work to do to, to get it completely flush. As we can see, there's still some white visible there. So now I'm just going to carefully trim that. Flush with the flush with the uh, perch. Up as well. Leave that away. I don't know, you may not be ambidextrous, but I'm going to switch hands. There. Okay. So that's one side uh, trimmed away. And I am going to pause the video here for a minute, change my blade, and then continue because uh, I think I'm unsafe with uh, the blade that I'm using right now. It seems too dull. Okay, we're going to do this other side now. Again, we're just going to pull it up. Have it follow the shape of the ramp, the rib, the uh, rib rather, to form our ramp shape. And it gives me some overage here. I'm going to score that with this knife. Along the shape of the perch and then see if I can just get this cleanly snap. That's more like it. See, that's what we want to happen. So now you can see we have our upper ramp panels in place. They're following the shape of the uh, ribs very nicely. So we're going to secure those now with this traction tape. So the idea here is going to be that we want to peel this traction tape, put a half of it made a slight error here. We're going to have to trim our traction tape down a little more. It's between these two rib panels that you have, or ribs, that we need to get our traction tape. And I need to take an eighth of an inch off of mine, so I'm going to do that. Let's see if it fits now. Good. That's what we want. And that total length turns out to be three and one quarter inches. So your traction tape, you're going to want to cut down to three and a quarter inches. I'm going to peel this, exposing the sticky side of the tape, and I am going to catch about half of that, maybe a little less, on the actual ramp panel on the inside, like this. Then, 
that gets pulled tight, pulled up like this, and then folded over the perch toward me to create a little nice little non-stick area, non-slip, non-skid area for the bird. So we can see that that ramp, that panel is still following the rib shape really well. And now it's secured in place by this traction tape, uh, which gives the birds purchase on this perch, but also will hold that traction tape for our next step where we're going to cement it. Um, but I'm going to have to do one more of these. So I tip my crow box on its side, trim this tape that I have down to three and one quarter inches. Just like that. Again, we're going to peel it to get that expose the sticky side. And we want a little bit of that on the inside of this ramp panel. And again, we'll use that to pull up for tightness and then fold toward to secure that. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, two panels that are pretty well in place and uh, secured with this traction tape. And now we're going to cement them. Um, and uh, the joint we're going to cement is here, 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 and here. So that's four places that we're going to put cement on this step. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to trace the shape of the panel up against the machine's front panel. Just like that. And then again, just like this. Flip the machine so that I can get access here. Follow the uh, ramp panel along the uh, front window. One more time here. Okay, and that's all there is to it for these uh, upper ramp panels. So those are ready to go. Um, except they need to dry, so we're going to let this sit for. I don't know, maybe 30, 20, 30 minutes, just enough to dry down and we'll move on and finish out these lower ramp panels and then we're almost done. Okay, this has been sitting now and, and drying for over 30 minutes, about 45 actually. And if I feel where I just cemented this upper ramp panel to the um, front window and to the machine front panel, um, uh, everything seems dry. So I know that uh, the cement takes longer than this to dry, but this is dry enough for us to proceed because we're not going to mess with these upper panels anymore. We're actually going to focus on the lower panels. We just want to make sure the cement on the uppers um, is dry enough that they don't uh, get moved or disturbed during this process. Now finishing out these lower panels is the same, basically the same principle as what we did on the upper panels. We just want to get these into place like this so that they follow the curve of the, um, the rib that we're going to attach them to. And in this case, you can see I managed to push these up into place, and they follow the shape of the rib extremely well. Um, if we look down inside the machine, though, these rear ones are not quite as well in place. So um, it's kind of difficult to do this all at once. I actually find it easier to work one panel at a time. So for that, I would lay the machine on its side like this, get this pushed up on both sides. Making sure to look inside the, look through the front window to make sure that the uh, the panels following the shape of the rib on the in and outside of the of the machine. Um, now on the <clears throat> on these lower panels, we're going to want to cement. Get a pointer here. We're going to want to cement this entire joint here, but we're going to want to cement from here to about there and stop on this other panel. And that's the reason for that is that the coin slots right here. And we want to make sure that um, we don't accidentally narrow this slot too much to accept a coin. Um, and so if we were just to cement to this point and stop, then we, we have the ability to be able to tune that, that kind of space. So if I push this panel up into place like that, um, my, uh, the uh, panel follows the, uh, the rib on the window pretty well. And I think I'll start by cementing that, and then we'll work with the back and then we'll move to the other side. So I'm going to keep
keep some pressure on the front edge of this uh, of the edge of this panel with my left hand or my right hand rather, and then uh, apply my thin bead of cement with my left. It's pretty straightforward, and that's done. Um, sadly, this needs to be held uh, during the, during this time so that it uh, can cure up properly um, without the panel slipping away. So I'm going to need to hold this enough for the cement to to kick up and uh, start bonding it by itself. I'm just going to keep that pressure on, roll the clock forward. Okay, that looks pretty good, enough to allow me to move to the next one and do the same thing. So um, I'm just going to put some pressure on this uh, on this front edge here of the panel and then I'm going to use my other hand to apply a thin bead of glue, cement rather, right here. There. Now this one also needs to be held for uh, just until the cement becomes strong enough to uh, hold the piece in place by itself. And with cement on both of these I like to just hold them both manually like this. So now we're going to hold for a little bit here. There. And now those um, those parts are, uh, you can see that our ramp panels have followed the contour of the rib which we use to guide the ramps. Now with those front edges cemented uh, we can see that if we we can push these now and uh, do the same trick uh, for the um, the front where the joint where the, these ramp panels meet the front panel of the machine but we do want to stop here where my fingers pointing or I guess I could point with this crusty applicator but we want to stop here just above the coin slot here because we don't want to risk narrowing the coin slot more than than uh, the actual coins that need to pass through. So I'm going to repeat that procedure again. I'm going to push this edge up. I'm going to keep an eye on it from back here. And I'm going to make sure that that ramp panel falls into, into shape. I have it mostly in the correct position now. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my cement. Quick, small bead. Again, I'm just going to kind of let this fall out of the tube if I can. I'm going to stop just above that slot. Well, now I'm just going to hold this in place right here, just like I did before. watch through the front window here uh, to the back to make sure that that panel is the way I want it. There. Um, and since this front edge is already cemented pretty well, uh, the rear edge is holding itself also fairly well. So uh, I'm just going to proceed now. Um, and this other panel is pretty well in position also. So I'm going to go ahead and apply cement to that joint as well. And then do a little bit more holding. Cement came rushing out there. That was, was going to make a scar in the front of the machine. Don't love that, but I'm stuck with it. <clears throat> okay, and with that cement applied, now I can pull this panel into shape. Make sure I'm seeing a little daylight. Not daylight, but you know, I can see inside the machine through that gap. And I just want to kind of hold everything where it is. So while you're holding these, it's a good idea to take a peek down inside and make sure that you've left a channel wide enough for the type of coin that you are going to have pass through here. And in this case, again, we're talking about U.S. quarters, so I'm pretty confident they're going to make it through there. And since I can see um, a little gap here in the coin slot uh, on both sides of my uh, lower ramp, I know that uh, the coins aren't going to bang into the front of the machine. They're going to pass in nicely. Okay, everything's holding itself now uh, in terms of cementing, so it is time to leave this alone. Um, and I'm going to leave this alone for about an hour because I want to make sure everything's set up really well before we move on. Okay, now this has had uh, an hour and a half to sit on my end, and I'm feeling pretty good that the um, cement is all 
<clears throat> dried down enough for me to proceed. So now I get to do some exciting stuff. I'm going to actually take some quarters here and uh, I'm just going to make sure that these end up inside the machine. So I'll drop one here, down it goes, here, both sides. So, whoop, that was a cheat. The middle. So we'll notice that uh, one thing that happens, one thing that happens when I drop a coin in the middle, you'll see that it actually bounces off of the um, basket spine and then down. And that takes it a little bit longer to get down like that. Um, <clears throat> but that will go away in a moment here because we're going to actually insert the liner for the basket. But now that we know that um, coins that uh, get dropped on the shoulders here uh, make their way all the way through the uh, ramp and into the machine, we can uh, <clears throat> move forward. We know that we don't need to stop to make any adjustments to our... Uh, to our um, our ramp panels or anything like that. So um, the one of the reasons that the coins uh, coming down here hit the servo spine, or sorry, not the servo spine, but the basket spine, uh, is because they're allowed to make a jump here. But once we install what we call the basket liner or the basket food liner, um, the uh, actual channel um, that the coins can pass through will be made more narrow. It'll actually follow the contours of these ribs. I, I guess the explanation isn't important. I'm just going to go ahead and peel this uh, liner, food liner, basket liner, I guess we call it. It's had a few names throughout the project, but it's a piece of styrene, and um, I'm just going to get the paper off both sides of it. And then, I think that the way the machine operates will make a good deal more sense. This is uh, dead simple to install um, once you have it. Um, I just uh, take this and fold it up kind of like a teardrop. Just hold the two flat ends together. Get it down into the basket. Now in this case, and this is not an uncommon problem, you may have to finagle it a little bit, but we do want the fit to be nice and tight. So I have, uh, now you can see I've pushed that down all the way to where the rib is. So now I'm going to start tucking these sides under the shoulders just like this. A little bit more of a push here just to have, help it follow the curves provided by the ribs. And then uh, it's designed to just tuck under the under the uh, shoulders here as it's done. Um, now there's a couple things you can do if you wish to refine this. You could actually pull this back out and trim it down a bit if you didn't for instance want to see these things here. But I like to just go with it the way it is. Um, and now this is the nice generous large spot where we will put peanuts and other food rewards. They'll rest right here and the coins that are dropped into the slots will actually pass between the bottom of the food liner and the top of each ramp liner and the coins now will be delivered more quickly to the inside of the machine and more smoothly because they're held down by the bottom of the food liner. So now we can probably drop coins here all day long. And uh, they'll feed in just fine and you'll also notice that they'll strike the, um, the uh, coin sensor here on the way through. Okay, so we're doing well here. We've got no coin feed problems with our assembly. And uh, let's get all these out of here so I can continue talking. It's a lot of noise. So now, um, this is what the uh, finished basket assembly looks like with the uh, ramp panels installed and with the food uh, liner installed. And um, that is all the work we're going to do on the basket. And um, for the next step, uh, we're going to install um, some interior components and discuss the way that the uh, lid and the perch fit. Um, and after that, we'll do the electronics, and then we'll be all done. 
Um, you don't need to worry about the um, the uh, food liner the, or the reward bin liner popping out. Um, it's going to bend. It's going to accept the shape. Basically, overnight, it'll probably accept the, accept the shape. And it's not critical that it fit exactly to the shape of the ribs, but it is good to have it, you know, as tight down there as you can get it to the the rib shape. Um, and then make sure you've tucked uh, your little corners in as well as you can here and here. Other than that, our basket is uh, finished.